Bibi Joshua's documentary. Wow, woo. okay. What's up, people? It's your girl Adela. Move closer. First of all, take some time to watch that documentary. It's in three parts. Each one is an hour long. Please and please don't be arguing online. Don't be arguing online about what you're yet to see. Like, why now? The man is dead. Why didn't they speak up? If you had actually watched the interview, you would have seen it written, Bagada. That days after the former disciples gave their first interview to BBC, TB Joshua died. So they actually spoke out before he died, but the investigation wasn't done. The interviews were not done when he died. Should they now abandon the investigation because he died when people were sharing chilling accounts of abuses? I mean, even presidents are investigated in death, so I don't think they needed to stop. Also, some of these disciples had been talking for years before he died on their own, without BBC. Some people made videos on YouTube. This woman in the BBC video wrote a book about TV Joshua before he died. She was marketing it herself. So they didn't start speaking out after he died. Also, I've seen people saying things like, but why is BBC doing a video about a Nigerian pastor? They want to bring Nigeria down. I <laughs> Again, if you had actually watched the video, BBC did not say anything about T.B. Joshua in that documentary, in that video. His disciples did. His former disciples did. And many of them are Nigerians. Should it matter on which platform? I mean, it's like if the people around you decide to speak to the media about you, will you now fight the medium? Some people are saying, well, there were white people among them. It's a conspiracy uh, from the UK. My dear, he had white people among his disciples. Should they not talk about their own experience? I mean, that wouldn't be balanced. BBC Africa Eye is made up of African journalists. They launched it in 2018 and since then they've exposed the addiction to cough syrup, uh, the codeine in Nigeria. You did not complain at that time. Three million bottles consumed every single day in just two northern states. So less than 24 hours after this film was screened, the codeine film, the Nigerian government banned the importation and manufacturing of codeine-based syrup. And then this same BBC uh, exposed lecturers and professors sleeping with students for grades. You did not complain at that time. They exposed influencers getting paid to manipulate your votes. You did not complain. They exposed the black acts. By the way, you need to watch their documentary about xenophobia in South Africa. That one is very, very recent. You will be shocked like, hey, you will be shocked. You will not say, ah, why is BBC exposing racism against us Nigerians in South Africa? With each of these videos, by the way, these people risk their lives going undercover to investigate things on your behalf. I don't understand. I don't think that you have a problem with the BBC, by the way. Honestly, I don't think you do when the story favors you, especially when they expose politicians, officials. I think the problem is that they touched your man of God. Ooh, they are. They touched your anointed. People are copying and pasting comments like, oh, this is mental colonization. Would a white organization do this against themselves? I said, shoot, where have you been? <laughs> in the UK, in the US? I can't even count how many times fake men of God have been exposed. I still remember the Catholic Church saga. In Baltimore alone, more than 150 Catholic priests and others associated with the Archdiocese of Baltimore reportedly sexually abused over 600 children. In fact, there's this pastor that was very popular for, you know, how he scammed people, Peter Popov. You just, just Google him. I know a lot of Nigerians still watch him. But Randy took a scanner to some of Popov's crusades and picked up radio transmissions. Turns out the voice Popov heard wasn't God's, but his wife's. I'm talking to you. Can you hear me? If you can't, you're in trouble. They will ask for people's information as they're entering his church, including their health challenges. People will write all these things down. And they will give it, and his wife would be reading it to him on the pulpit. He had very small earpiece. Popov's wife, Elizabeth, had previously gotten personal else. information from people in the audience and then fed it to her husband electronically through a tiny earpiece. And so he would be calling out people's name. Oh, I see, so, 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 so. You have so, so, so problem. And those people will be like, ah. Papa, how did you know? You know. <laughs> Jody Dean. Jody. Jody. Dean. Jody Dean. No, she should be right there on your right side. Okay, she lives at four two six seven Masterson. Four two six seven Masterson. I can see the angels of God all around your house. And then you have some people that keep saying, "Oh, this whole BBC thing is all a lie. They're lying against the man of God." I'm like, "Are we like what? We're still doing this?"
People have been speaking out about TB Joshua for decades. Not like one, two, three years, decades, my people. In the 90s, that show. Several people had spoken up. One woman like that said that TB Joshua should do DNA tests if he's saying that he's not the father of her child. He don't take. And some of these disciples had been speaking out for long as well. It baffles me that those who knew the man, those who lived under the same roof, with this man for years, including his own biological daughter, are telling us that this is the kind of man that he was. But you that is watching him on TV, you are saying they're lying. You see, this is why people don't talk. When someone has been idolized by the public, if they happen to be abusive, people don't usually believe they are victims. And I'm not attacking Christianity as some people would think, myself, I'm a Christian. But the problem is many Christians have idolized men of God to the point where even if Jesus should show you videos of what some of them are doing in secret, you will not believe Jesus. You will say with due respect, Master Jesus, you are wrong on this one. Some, some people are still defending him, by the way, on the building that collapsed. More than 100 lives. But you know, if their family members were to be one of the victims, the story would be different. Suddenly they would want to know who, what, where, why, what happened. Eh? The Bible says, you shall have no other gods besides me. A man of God can become your God. The Bible says, test, test all spirit. It's not everybody that claims to be a man of God that is truly a man of God or a woman of God. And more importantly, the Bible says, by their fruits, we shall know them. Fruit is their character. They, who they are, Ganga. He never said by the miracles that they perform because many people get carried away by miracles. Oh, it's happening here. He never said by people falling down and when they pray. Pff. He also never said by their giving. A lot of politicians go to churches to give their tithes now and give their offering. But beyond the giving, what kind of person are they? Are they embezzling money? Are they collecting bribe? Are they buying people off? Do they have a hot temper? Do they do rituals? How do they treat the people around them? Do they have self-control? It is very, very important to always remember who died for you. Stop replacing him with a man that impressed you. Huh? You know, I watched a movie last weekend called Exposed by Sheon Adejumobi. It's about a man of God with a secret addiction to pornography. Exposure is always the antidote for a double-faced person. They fear being exposed to more than anything else. You know, many of you that are abusing your wives, for example, you are abusing her with words, emotional manipulation, or you are hitting her. If we can watch what you are doing on a big screen, just for like five minutes, you will suddenly stop. Eh? But guess what? The host of heaven is always watching. I wish we would always remember that. You know, in this movie that I'm talking about, Exposed, you will see how people make excuses when they are not ready to change. But the movie also tells us how to handle someone that is truly repentant, someone that is ready to change, so that we don't end up losing them. So me, I'm not here to cast stone. I'm not here to say T.B. Joshua is guilty or not. I'm here to say, stop putting people in the place of God. I'll put the link to that movie in the description so you can watch it. You can watch it with your family, by the way. It's not rated PG at all. <laughs> they actually tried. They actually really, really tried. In fact, they have some really funny scenes, you know? The way pastor was looking at Emily that day, the last time I, the last time I looked at a lady like that, that was when I was in the world. In the spirit, we don't look. Mm. We see. Kai. The moment you understand the kind of gift, what you carry inside of you, mm. you neglect all the side talks. Ah, oh, thank you, Papa. Kaba, hmm? shataba. Thank you, Papa. God bless you. Except for one time that the brother was wearing fake hair on campus, I was like, Seriously, what's that? <laughs> I'm very alone now. I'm also putting the links to the BBC interview in the description. Take time to watch it, especially if you want to argue. Some people will still come and comment it without actually watching it. Don't forget that God hates it when we put any human being in his place. That is the cocoa of this video. Did you guys click the thumbs up button yet? Thank you so much for watching. All right, y'all, it's been real, and I'm keeping it right up in here. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and if you're yet to subscribe to my channel, I'm watching you on Plasma TV. Press the subscribe button and the bell button. Until next time, I'm going to see you all later. Peace out.